So let's go into packages and patches. So some information there about fetching them, where you can fetch them from. So let's start by creating a location for these packages. And we make it sticky so that only the owner is the one that can delete the files in that directory. The files can be downloaded individually as described in the next two sections. Um, can be downloaded using wget and, w and the wget list as described below. Uh, to download all the packages and patches by using wget list sysv and an input to wget command use this. Now I think something's changed here because when I downloaded the files, wget list sysv didn't exist, it was just wlist on its wget list. Um, so I think there might have been a bug there, but I presume it should be fixed now. Um, let's have a, a look. Um, Linux from scratch.org. Oh, what have I done there? Right, it must have been one of the uh, shortcut buttons I've just accidentally pressed on the keyboard. Linux from scratch.org. LFS um, download stable book. I oh, know it's still wget list. Okay, so I presume that link there is somewhere different. Oh, it's come down with the book, so. Um, let's read online, see where it points to. Oops, that one there. Uh, okay, that's interesting. That's um, so from the from the online book it works from the offline book it doesn't it wouldn't work um, because the that's on my local server it's called wget list if I go back to the download option stable book directory yeah it's called wget so that that's probably wrong it looks like that should be wget list sysv because that means that if I click this it will fail downloading it from my local server. Let's open that in a new tab. Oh, it has worked. I don't understand that. Okay, there must be some jiggery pokery going on behind the scenes. Um, renaming that 12.3 wget list sysv Oh no, I see. Right, okay. Within the directory of that on the server, there's another wget list, I think. And it's called wget list slash sysv. That's what's happened. I understand that now. So there's two separate copies of wget list. There's a copy in the download directory. And there's a copy that comes with the book when you untar that, that archive. That's what's happened. That's uh, a little bit misleading. Okay, so there's not a problem. It's just the fact that there's two different copies of wget list, and one's called wget list sysv, and the other one isn't. Right, um, I'm not sure why that is. Whether the sysv one is specific to sysv, and the wget list has got everything from the sysv and the system D books. I'm I'm not sure, um, but it looks like what whatever however you do this, um, it, you shouldn't have any problems at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change to 
the sources directory and I'm going to well first of all I'm going to copy that um, script we had at the beginning to find the versions just to keep a copy of that with this copy that in here just for record probably won't ever get used again but it's just part of the build it will be there so what I need to do is to download this, um, well I call it a steering file because it's a list of all the packages but it also steers this command um, as to what packages to download. But it's also got a list of the MT5 signatures so it's like a, a kind of multi-use um, file. So what I'm going to do is download that file first. That's that there. So if I look at that, you can see there's all the URLs for all the packages. And this command here will go and fetch each one of those packages automatically, just reading that file and downloading. But I'm not going to let that carry on because, as I say, it's, um, it'll take longer. The, as you can see, the download rates are quite slow, 1.6 meg, 1.3 meg. Um, some of the servers are slow, others are a little bit faster. But it's going to be quicker for me to download it locally. As I say, I've already repair, prepared it. Um, and I've already verified that the packages are correct. So let's fetch that from here. So you can see it's a little bit faster. Um, it has got a gigabyte card in this machine, but it's a Pentium Pro, so it's quite old, um, which is why it's not getting much faster than 20 megabytes per second. Uh, let's just put that over there in case we need to refer to the web page again. And you can see it's a lot faster anyway. Okay, so I'll just extract that. And move. Those into this directory and get rid of the packages directory. And I'll get rid of the packages tar file again. Okay, so when this command is finished you would have a uh, a directory full of files just like this. Um, if you've copied exactly everything I've done, you'll have the version check in there as well. Um, but that that's just something I've done for personal use. <clears throat> it's not something that's instructed to do by the book. So next thing I need to do is to get the... Oh, sorry, yes, I said this had the signatures and it doesn't. It's um, a separate file for the signatures. So that is literally just a steering file. It shows where the locations for the packages are. So we need to validate these packages. So we get this MD5 sums file, and then we can run these commands here to validate. Let's do one at a time. To validate each of those packages as A, been downloaded correctly, and B, actually exists. So we'll just push the current directory onto a stack and change into the sources. Well, we're there anyway, so it doesn't matter. Then run this MD5 sum. Everything there is checked OK. There's an OK next to everything. And more importantly, there's no messages at the bottom saying that there's a mismatch or that a file is missing. And then just pop D to get back. If there is a file missing, then you'll need to investigate that either retry it or uh, try to download it from somewhere else and the same if the files missing some of these files do go missing because they get updated rapidly and they remove the previous version um, again look look for the correct version elsewhere um, there are various mirrors around one of my favorites is the um, 
Oregon State University, I think it's called. Um, if you type in something like Linux from scratch, LFS, Oregon State University. Uh, here, this is the link here, FTP, pub, LFS, LFS packages. Oh, in fact, it's the first link as well. Big pardon. That's what I expected to see. Yeah, LFS packages, go into that. And you can see there's prior versions going back to 6.0. We're on 12.3. So you can go in there and download each individual package. So if you've got one that's missing or one that's not verifying correctly, or it looks like you can download the whole lot anyway um, as one complete tarball. So that's, that's an alternative if that would be better for you. So we've downloaded all the packages, we've checked them, they're all validated, so now we need to change the ownership of them to make sure they're owned by root, and we can move on. So this page has got a list of all the packages, the home page of the project, and a direct link to uh, the individual package archive. So if you have got one that's missing, it might be worth trying to access it directly from these links. And then we've got a list of the pack patches. So the patches have come down as part of the downloads we've already done. You can see the ones in green there. There's the SysV init one. But again, they're just repeated here uh, for convenience. 